And at level 20, we get the worst capstone feature in this entire revised rulebook. Would you like to read it, Bob? Okay, I'll read it. We have Faux Slayer. <laughs> it's, it really uh, oversells itself. Yeah, the damage die for two of your Hunter's Mark spell increases from a D6 to a D10. Couldn't even give you a well, D12. <laughs> oh, they should be embarrassed for printing that. Yeah. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Cameron, a.k.a. Prince Phantom. And today we'll be talking about the new Ranger class, uh, with, the, with the revised Ranger class for uh, 2024. Yeah, the uh, potentially most controversial um, class that in all of 5e's lifetime, to be honest, Um Often considered the weakest, though it never actually was. No <laughs> class that gets spells can be the weakest, um, especially not with a spell list as good as the Rangers. That being said, I get where people were coming from, not in that it was weak, but in that it was unsatisfying. Mm. It should have been more. Uh, and, to the designer's credit, with the release of Tasha's College of Everything, most of the Rangers' problems were fixed. Um, the ranger saw heavy revision in that book and pretty much all of its useless class features were gutted and completely replaced with things that actually helped so what we're going to see here today is a lot of that actually uh, the ranger despite being advertised as a brand new class by Jeremy Crawford himself because it had seen so many revisions in reality this is mostly just the Tasha's ranger with a couple extra things yeah, looking over your article, which will be included in the uh, in the description here. So uh, if you want to follow along with the written version, uh, click that link. Um, yes, I noticed this. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of amazing changes. Yes, however, there are a lot of changes in the subclasses, and there are some important changes in the main class, even at early levels. So stick around if you want to play Ranger. This is there are still some major shakeups here. Just not. Maybe as many as they advertised. Right. All right, well, let's dig in. All right, so level one, uh, your basic proficiencies, you'll see no significant changes here. Um, however, immediately, we need to get weapon mastery, which is great. We've already talked about that with a couple of classes so far, so I won't delve too far into that, but the ranger obviously enjoys that greatly. Uh, rangers also get their spell casting right here at level one. They used to have to wait until level two. Um. This also impacts their multi-classing. Normally, uh, in the 2014 uh, rules, if you multi-classed, say, as a druid into a ranger, you would not gain spellcasting progression until you reached ranger level 2. So it took your ranger level and factored into your spellcasting progression, rounded down. Now it's rounding right. up. So okay. multi-classing with ranger is a little bit better now. Uh, but yeah, they get spellcasting at level one. Besides that, their spellcasting progression stays mostly the same. They do learn more new spells, though. Um, they, they, The ranger before this uh, kind of had the sorcerer problem, where it couldn't learn very many spells. In fact, even less than the sorcerer. Um, so now the ranger I mean, can actually learn quite a few more. Sorcerer's bread and butter. I mean, ranger does other things. Exactly, yes. But it is nice you'll have a bit more versatility in your spellcasting now. Uh, ooh, this is a good t good time to bring this up. Um, what about spells for half casters in general? Like, you know, a lot of these spells that rangers get are pretty cool when other casters get them, but you know, six or seven le le spells uh, levels later, when uh, the the ranger gets it, it's uh not so exciting. Yeah, has so that, that hasn't or changed. Yeah, half casting progression is still the same. Right, the um, progression, but what about have the spells adapted to that at all? A little bit. There's a couple of ones that I'd like actually like to touch on. So the Ranger spell list for one, uh, many other spells saw revisions, and many new spells were added to the spell list as well. Basically, all of the ones that were added to the Ranger spell list from Tasha's are in the core Ranger spell list now. 
so that's good but most people were already playing with those rules anyway right so that's not a big deal um but there are some uh notable things so i'd like to talk about some of the spells that either got enhanced or added real quick just some highlights real quick okay so in Staring Strike and Hail of Thorns, we haven't talked about the Paladin yet, but the Paladin as a whole got a revision to all of their smite spells. They are still cost a bonus action to use, but now instead that bonus action happens immediately when you hit. You don't have to set up for it first and then hit. Mm -hmm. These spells work the same way, which makes them better. They don't require concentration anymore. And, uh, well, at least Hail of Thorns doesn't and Staring Strike still does, but that's because it has an ongoing effect. Um, yeah. but that makes them easier to use and generally just a lot better as spells. They're a lot less clunky. So normally I'd never see using these spells. Now, maybe they're legitimate candidates. Um, magic weapon has been added to the list and also no longer requires concentration. Ooh. So that's a spell that normally got edged out because of the concentration requirement. Now you may actually have a use for it. Um, let's talk about conjure animals. I have said previously in some other videos that the Conjure line of spells has been completely redone. This is one of them, and it's definitely a lot weaker. So it's a completely new spell. It now works very similarly to Spirit Guardians, creating an aura of damage around you. Right. Um, and it gives you advantage on strength checks while you're uh, concentrating on it. And also, <clears throat> it does damage on a failed dexterity save. Similar damage to Spirit Guardians. However, it deals no damage on a successful save. Wow. Which makes it a lot worse than Spirit Guardians. Yeah. Um, honestly, it makes me kind of think this probably isn't a very good spell. Especially not when you're getting it at ninth level. Well, that's always been the, the issue. Yeah. Regular <laughs> Conjure Animals was fine for a Ranger to get at ninth level because yeah. it was still powerful. This, I don't think Rangers are going to be wanting. Conjure Barrage did get an upgrade, though. It now deals 5d8 rather than 3d8. Um, that's, that it's it's a pretty decent burst damage option for an area of effect. You might use it occasionally to muff up weaker enemies. Um, so hey, it goes from a 1 out of 5 spell to a 2.53 out of 5 <laughs> spell. So and we'll take it. Um, Dispel Magic has been added. Now Dispel Magic is on all spellcasting classes, I believe. Oh, wow. Um, this is one of the few that it wasn't on previously. Uh, Conjure Woodland Beings, likewise, is completely new. Uh, this now creates a damaging AoE, and it also lets you disengage as a bonus action while you're concentrating on it. This one's weird. I... The damage numbers probably aren't good enough by the time the ranger gets it. But uh, it yet to be seen as to how good this spell actually is. I don't think it's very good, though. So how is it different than Conjure Animals? Uh, okay, so the Conjure Animals AOE is centered on you. This one right. you put somewhere. Okay. Um, Grasping Vine got a big upgrade. It has increased range. Uh, previously, if you don't remember the spell, shot out of vine that would grab people and drag right. them, and it could kind of repeat that over and over again. Now it deals some damage, dealing forty-eight damage along with the pull and grapple. Um, so this was previously a awful spell that I can actually see you using now, um, especially in conjunction with other AOBs that you're pulling people back into. Right. Um, and the final one that I want to touch on, Swift Quiver, a spell that. Many of the community thought was great. I thought it was awful because it cost a bonus action to use, then allowed you to make attacks with your bonus action. So you're forgoing attacks on your first turn with casting it to make two attacks later, when if you were using Crossbow Expert, you could have just made two attacks, one mm. on this turn and one on the next with your bonus action. Anyway, uh, it fixed that. It now lets you make two bonus actions, bonus action attacks on the turn you cast it. Well, that's nice. So it, I think it is actually, it could actually be worth casting now. So I mean, that's a duration spell, right? I think it lasts a minute. Yeah, so I, I don't mind giving up one bonus action for uh, continued use of it if I don't have crossbow expert. Yeah, so it's it went from a 
very expensive way to get a couple extra attacks per combat to a very expensive way to get a lot more attacks per combat. <laughs> okay. Let's put it that way. So the Ranger spell list is mostly just stuff that's been poured over from Tasha's. There's stuff like aid and uh, healing word and things like that, but those are already in it from Tasha's. I didn't mention those. Uh, so there are some there are some upgrades here, but I will say the nerfing to the conjure spells and also the nerfing to the surprise system and the nerf, therefore, to pass without trace definitely makes the Ranger spell casting overall because we took the absolute highest, highest peak and we brought it down a lot, and we only raised the floor a little, the average is the ranger spellcasting is weaker than it was. Yeah. That being said, there's more we get at first level. Yes, we're still on level one, though I've talked about fifth level spells, which I just don't until level sure. 17. But this is the beginning of what I think is the actual problem with the design of this ranger. Favor down. So, here's how the feature works. You automatically have Hunter's Mark prepared, and it doesn't count against the number of prepared Ranger spells you know. Additionally, you may cast it without expending a spell slot twice per day, and more times as you increase in level. All right. That doesn't sound terrible, right? No, sounds now sounds Hunter's pretty Mark. Good. The only the only change Hunter's Mark has had is that it now deals force damage instead of the weapons damage type. Mm -hmm. That's whatever probably see the exact same results uh, in terms of its actual damage output. My problem with Hunter's Mark has always been that it's not a very good spell. You are using a bonus action to deal 1d6 extra damage on each of your hits. Not each of your attacks, each of your hits. That's not the same thing, first off. Two, this new system, for Marshall specifically, has so many uses for your bonus action, you will be so hard-pressed to create a marshal in this new system that does not have a every single turn use for their bonus action that is better than Hunter's Mark. Uh, for example? So, for example, weapons with the Nick property allow yeah. you to make multiple attacks with your action that make another attack with your bonus action. Um, the polearm master feat still works as it does. The crossbow expert feat still works as it did. You still get bonus action attacks okay. from both of those. Um, there's more to it than that, especially with certain classes and subclasses provide. Some that are actually in the ranger that are just strictly better than casting and changing the target of Hunter's Mark. Now you can always make the argument Hunter's Mark is best when you're fighting a single very high HP creature. In those instances, yes, maybe you might eke out a tiny bit more damage with Hunter's Mark than you would have if you hadn't cast it to begin with. That being said, there are better spells to concentrate on even still. But you do get free castings of this. So, I will say, on an especially hard adventuring day, especially in early levels, and you've used all your spell slots and you don't have anything else to do with them, sure. Because these right. are free castings. We'll touch back on Hunter's Mark in a bit. And it will be a bit. Because we do get some upgrades to it later. Let's move on to level 2, unless you have any questions about all of that that we talked about at level 1. No, I'm good. Alright, let's move on. So, they have a feature called Deft Explorer. This is just a name change. It is identical to the Tasha's canny ability. Um, I won't go into detail on what that is. I like to move, keep moving. Are they get a fighting style. I like style? the name Deft Explorer better. I do too. I, I'll give you that one. Uh, they get a fighting style feat. Remember, fighting styles are feats now, but they work just the same as they did before, with the exception that once you reach level four, you can take another fighting style if you'd like to. Okay. Uh, level three subclasses. More of those later. Level four, you get a feat that's unchanged. Level five, extra attack, unchanged. Level six. Now, Roving, which was a Tasha's feature that gave you a boost to your movement speed, uh, now also grants a 10-foot speed boost along with a... Uh, it was previously a 5-foot speed boost, okay. so now it's 10 feet, and gives you a climbing and swimming speed, but to gain this benefit, you cannot wear heavy armor, which most rangers weren't anyway, so not a big sure. deal. So that's just a straight buff. Um, rangers now have better mobility. Level 7 and level 8 are unchanged. Uh, level 9, we now get expertise as rangers. We get expertise in two skills that we are proficient in. 
So that's great. Love that. Sure. Yeah. Level 10, uh, Tireless, which was a feature that uh, is introduced in Tasha's, allows you to use a bonus action to gain a number of temporary hit points. Um, normally, you'd use it at the start of your day just to get a buffer. And, you know, the, uh, it's the only change to it is that it used to be able to use a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per day. Now it's your number of times equal to your wisdom modifier per day. That's the only change. Probably going to end up being around the same amount of time. Yeah. So level 11 and level 12 are unchanged. Now level 13 is where we're going to start seeing more improvements to our Hunter's Mark. Note, we've gone from level 1 to level 13 without seeing any improvements on our Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark is also not a spell that increases with damage as you upcast it. Right. That has not been changed. So at level 13... If you'd like to spend your concentration and bonus action to set up a level one spell, <laughs> congratulations. Damage cannot break your concentration on Hunter's Mark. Oh, that is, that does hurt. If, you know, this, if damage couldn't break your concentration at all, that, that would be, be great. An amazing feature. But, uh, yeah, it's, I, and I don't hate Hunter's Mark, but I'm not excited about this at level 13. No. Uh, Put a pin in that. We'll come back to it a little bit more later. Level 14, we get Nature's Veil. Very similar to the Tasha's ability, which allowed you to become invisible as a bonus action. Um, now it lasts until the end of your next turn, rather than the start. And uh, it's useful a number of times per day equal to your Wisdom modifier. I believe it was based on proficiency previously. So, uh, just a slight buff to that feature. Levels 15 and 16 are unchanged. Level 17, Precise Hunter, you have advantage on attacks against creatures targeted by your Hunter's Mark spell. Okay. That's that's a kind of all right improvement, especially if you're going to get something with incredibly high AC, right? Sure. I would have um, liked that as the level 13 feature. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Anyway, um, level 18. You get feral senses. You gain a thirty-foot blind sight. That's pretty cool. I like that. I don't know if it's level eighteen. Cool. No, it's not. But it no. is yeah. neat. Uh, level nineteen, you get an epic boon, just as every class does now. And at level twenty, we get the worst capstone feature in this entire revised rule book. Would you like to read it, Bob? Okay, I'll read it. We have foe slayer. <laughs> It's, it really uh, oversells itself. Yeah, the no. damage die for two of your Hunter's Mark spell increases from a D6 to a D10. Couldn't even give you well, a D12. I know. <laughs> oh, they should be embarrassed for printing that. Yeah, they should. Did you know that it's somehow worse than their previous capstone? The previous capstone led them at their wisdom modifier to damage. <laughs> Yeah, Which well, this, wasn't uh, great, but at least it didn't require them to concentrate on a first level spell at level 20. And, I mean, going from a D6 to D10, uh, with the averages, you're talking about a plus two. Plus two to damage, yes. Uh, I hope your uh, wisdom modifier is better than plus two. Yeah, I would hope by level 20. <laughs> oh, man. This... This is that is genuinely an embarrassing capstone, and they bragged about it in their videos <laughs> that they did. They thought this was amazing. Now, granted, oh. Jeremy Crawford has also been quoted in saying, "Okay, but bit of context uh, in the playtest version of the um, weapon mastery system, there was another mastery called uh, versatile, which allows you to use uh, weapons that had the versatile property." Uh, excuse me, it was called Flex, but it applied to weapons with a versatile property. Which the versatile property normally is like a long sword. If you mm -hmm. use it with two hands, you deal a D10. If you use it with one hand, you deal a D8. It allowed you to use the bigger damage dice while only wielding in one hand. That was what the weapon mastery did. And it was frequently called the worst weapon mastery because it effectively amounted to a plus one to your damage. Yeah, which was awful compared to pushing something 15 feet or toppling things, you know, all that stuff. Right. 
And he was quoted as saying that Flex offered a massive increase in damage. So I'm not sure if he knows how dice math works. I don't mean to call into question the lead designer of this game. I think I think that's exactly what you mean to do. But yeah, I don't see any other way to address yeah. this. Like, what am I supposed to say here? This is awful. Um, oh, yeah. Nobody is ever going to take a ranger in the 2024 rules to level 20. I mean, take it to level 19 for the epic boon and take a fighter level at level 20 or something. I don't know. You'll get better. You'll get more than what this has given you. Yeah, well. That being said, as negative as I am uh, at the specifically Hunter's Mark features, right? I'm very negative on those. I think you're, those are basically dead levels. Because why would you be concentrating on a first level spell by that point in the game? Even as a half caster, you still have like 10 spell slots by that point. Right. And you're mostly spending your turns attacking. How were you going through that many spells? So, that being said, I would still like to remind everyone, this is still basically the Tasha's Ranger. Just with a Weird hunter's mark fetish. <laughs> but the Tasha's Ranger is still really, really good. Like, it was the best half caster in the 2014 rules by a long shot. Like, it was very, very good. The best non full caster in the game, and maybe arguably better than a couple of the full casters. Like, that's you can make argument. an argument it might have been better than the Warlock. Either way, point being, it was very good. This is still that. There's just a couple of weird things in it. <laughs> so, it's hard to rate on a design principle. Like, let's exile ourselves from power level here. Because as a power level, this is still above average. But I in terms of the design of it, I'm so incredibly disappointed by this. Mm. Like, they just reprinted the Tasha's Ranger and threw in a couple of weird Hunter's Mark things. Yeah. And Weapon Mastery. Which is good. Don't get me wrong. But it's not special. No, it doesn't feel like a, a new revised Ranger. No, it definitely does not feel like the brand new class that they advertised it as, unless you've never played with the Tasha's rules. In which case, yeah, it is, but everybody was playing with those because... Don't say it too loud, but you could find them online for free. <laughs> like, anybody who uses the argument, oh, well, what if people didn't buy the Tasha's book? You didn't have to, okay? I won't tell you where to go, but there were plenty of places to go. Like, And also, I mean, like, as long as one person in your group has the exactly. books... Then... Yeah. Let's move on to subclasses because there's a light at the end of this tunnel that I want to get to. Okay. At least for a few of them. Let's talk about the Beastmaster. So, Beastmaster was frequently derided as the worst subclass in the 2014 handbook. I would argue it wasn't because it still had some niche uses, but it definitely had a lot of design problems. Namely, the fact that you couldn't command your beast without using your action. Yeah, that was rough. Which, yeah, is very dumb. They fixed this. This is another thing that they fixed in Tasha's. The Beastmaster subclass got some revisions. You guys talked about that in your recent review of it. I say recent was a couple months ago, but still. Yes. Uh, and that made it a lot better. It put it above average in terms of Ranger subclasses. So this is building off of that. Our third level Primal Companion feature is nearly a direct port of the Tasha's version of this feature which is a good thing uh the only difference is that you'll notice in the stat block some of the things that were previously based on your proficiency bonus are now based on your wisdom bonus that's um, a common theme here yeah you'll notice as we go through this there's a lot more emphasis on rangers have actually having to put some focus on their wisdom there were a couple of ranger subclasses that you could kind of ignore your wisdom with just take spells that don't require a saving throw or anything mm -hmm. and you know you didn't really need a high wisdom that's not really as true for this ranger. However, I don't want that to be seen as a bad thing because as I've talked about in some other videos, 
every feat that you get after level four gives you a plus one to an ability score. So you, all characters, this is true for all characters, right. are going to have, generally speaking, higher ability scores than 2014 characters did, just because of that fact alone. So it's not as bad that you have to raise your wisdom a little bit. And do you have the uh, just straight up ability score bump yes. option? Okay. Yes. So Which is points. actually now a feat that you take, but oh, it works right. the okay. exact same. It's yeah. just simplification of rules. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, they also get exceptional training, uh, which is a, uh, I believe their seventh level feature. Um, when you use a bonus action to command your beast, uh, you can also command it to take the dodge, dash, or disengage action as a bonus action on its turn. So, so it can make its attacks and also dodge, disengage, or dash. Do you have to, like, if you just wanted to attack your enemies, do you have to use your every time for that? Yes, your bonus action. Okay. Which then creates problems with the next feature, Bestial Fury. The first line of it is great. It allows your beast to attack twice on its turn rather than once. Love it. Great. That's it. You get this 11th level, go into tier 3 play, you're basically getting an extra attack. Great. Fantastic. The second part of it, it just allows it to benefit from your Hunter's Mark. Okay. Which also requires your bonus action to set to, up... To, to target and set up, right? To but, cast. Then yeah. also it requires your bonus action every time you want to swap it to a new creature. To swap it, but as long as you got one guy there that's tough to kill... You know. Let me ask you a question. How long will it take Hunter's Mark to catch up in damage to the two beast attacks you sacrificed to cast it. Uh, a while, yeah. The answer is more than three turns. Yeah. How often have you had a hunter's mark or seen a hunter's mark stay on one creature for more than three turns? All right. And you not now, lose let, concentration on it either. Let me give you this scenario, though. All right. Uh, you're, you're in a fight with several baddies. For whatever reason, you have your hunter's mark going. You're fighting this guy over here. He dies. Bonus action switch. All right. Now uh, I'm actually benefiting from this. This is... Right? Well, you couldn't use your bonus action to command your beast now. Well, I couldn't before. The other, you know, when I switched... Uh, Every right. turn that you spend either casting or retargeting the spell, yes, yes, you yes. sacrifice two attacks. Yeah. That's there unfortunate. Is, and also, even if you make the argument, oh, well, if you're fighting a big boss monster, after you know three turns, you'll be net positive in damage. You could have cast any other spell. Yeah. Anything else that would have done more damage than this. It's you're still getting a good feature at level 11. Don't disregard the fact that your beast now makes two attacks. This is still good. Just ignore that second line of text. Do not try and use Hunter's Mark with this subclass. It's a trap and it will net you, it will be a net negative for your character in terms of damage output. 99% oh, that, of the time. I don't like that because I want to use the thing that I get for free twice a day. Yeah. And all those higher level features that work off of Hunter's Mark are irrelevant for the Beastmaster. <laughs> oh. So, uh, their last feature, uh, share spells, which allows you to share spells that you've cast on yourself and your beast, completely unchanged. Just one. Okay. Uh, if you just ignore the part about Hunter's Mark, this is a fantastic subclass. Genuinely. I know that there's a big negative in the middle of it, if you ignore that, and you can, you're not missing out on anything if you ignore it. This is an amazing subclass. It provides the fantasy of having a pet and using it in combat. It's adaptable. You can have a beast of the land, a beast of the sky, a beast of the sea. It works. It's great. I love it. Play it. Just ignore that line, and you'll have a great time. All right, what other subclasses do we have? 
We have the Fey Wanderer from Tasha's, and as with most subclasses from Tasha's that are being ported into this book, you find very few changes. Um, the only change that I could notice is that uh, they, the Fey Wanderer got an expanded spell list, which they learned sure. five new spells uh, automatically. Uh, Dispel Magic on that list has been swapped for Summon Fey. Okay, sure. Uh, they actually get a feature that works off of Summon Fey. So the fact that they didn't get it automatically previously is kind of weird. So it's really just fixing something that should have been there to begin with. All right. Um, the conjure spells have changed. What about the summon spells? Are they the summon spells are nearly unchanged? These okay, are the ones that good. allow you to summon one creature that has a slightly customizable stat block, depending on right, like if you right. choose. You know, I like that. I, I mean, yeah the the conjure spells were nuts, uh, but it's probably best for the game that they were. Uh, as you say, nerfed. Yeah, I would have liked to see them retuned in a, maybe a different way. Maybe just remove the I summon eight creatures thing. Like, yeah. Especially limit it, to, limit it to four or maybe even three or two. I, I'd been fine with that. Either way. Um, there's a bunch of ways they could have done it. They chose to do it this way. So we rolled it. Uh, but yeah, the Fae Wonder... Nearly unchanged. It was already one of the Rangers' best subclasses, probably its second best. Um, it might have a claim to be the best one now. I'm not sure because we're going to talk about what used to be the best one was the Gloomstalker. And I don't oh. know if it is anymore. Uh oh. The Gloomstalker is one of the very, very few instances in this new book where we see a genuine nerf. Uh, this is this is genuinely less powerful than it was previously. So their extra spells that they get are unchanged. The biggest change comes right at level three. Their Umbral Sight feature that gave them dark vision uh, does actually get a buff here. In grants an additional 60 feet of dark vision if you already had dark vision. So I, don't I really always like that. that sort of thing, yes. But their Dread Ambusher feature, which was the big drawing point, gave you an extra attack on turn one, and it dealt extra damage with that extra attack and gave you an initiative bonus. Still get the initiative bonus, but the extra attack has been removed. Instead, now it allows you to deal an extra 2d6 of psychic damage when you hit, once per turn, a number of times per day equal to your wisdom modifier. So, numbers-wise, this is weaker than the previous one. Because right. there are, there were ways that you could stack that extra attack to deal a crap ton of extra damage that would easily outpace this. And if you had multiple combats in a turn in a in a day, then it stacked even higher. That being said, this is still extra damage. We're looking at say you have a wisdom modifier of sixteen, and at low levels that might be Whoa, optimistic. That's a hell of a modifier. Excuse me, sorry, wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> That would feel that'd be great actually if you could do this 16 yeah. times. Heck yeah, I'm all in actually. No, wisdom modifier plus three because you have a score of 16, right? Which at low levels might be optimistic, but I think by level eight should be achievable. Um, for any character, that would be 6d6 psychic damage extra per day. That's nice. Uh, yeah. I would save it for a crit if you could, because this would be doubled with a crit. So that's nice. Um, and it's nice it, that you can you can choose to do that. Yes, yeah, so you choose to do it. And yeah. You choose to do it yeah. after you hit, so you're always getting the damage. It's not like you can choose to use it and waste it because you missed. Right. No, but I mean, like you can save it for a crit. Yes, you can. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can only use it once per turn. So you know, if you use it and then you crit later, you could use yeah. it then. So you know. Try and be careful with how you use it, but also it's a whole mind game. I'm not going to go too deep into it right now, but be mindful of it. I don't like it as much. It's not that much worse, and it might actually be in some certain circumstances maybe a little bit better because there aren't as many ways to stack a ton of damage onto a single attack in this player's hand because it was in the previous with the removal of specifically sharpshooters plus 10. Yeah. So 
That being said, the Gloom Stalker's best feature was that it could completely delete a target on turn one, a high priority target. It could take them out of the fight entirely before they got to do anything. This won't be quite as good at doing that. Yeah. Um, aside from that, as we move on from level three, uh, Iron Mind, the feature that gives them proficiency in wisdom saving throws, is unchanged, and that's still a good feature. Even if Sam thinks it's boring, it is good. So <laughs> don't let that don't let that mar your opinion of it. Is still it's good. good to get as a feature, as rather than something you're you're choosing. Exactly. Uh, the Stalker's Fury feature has been changed. So now the damage of your Dread Ambusher increases from 2d6 to 2d8. That's not a big increase, but I'll no. take it. Yeah. Uh, the bigger deal is when you use your Dread Ambusher feature, you may make an additional attack against a target within five feet of your original target. Or you may make every creature within 10 feet of your target, including your actual target, make a wisdom save or be frightened of you for the next uh, round. Now, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I have to make a dent in here. Uh, I wrote it down in the article, so that's correct. This doesn't affect your original target, doesn't affect you, but can affect allies. Oh. So there is friendly fire to this, so be careful. Well, yeah, I mean... That, I, being frightened of me, I don't mind that so much. I mean, they can still fight the enemies. They just yeah, can't, but they still like, have move... disadvantage on their attacks against them. Yeah, if the, oh. if the creature that you you are frightened of is within your line of sight, you have disadvantage on attack rolls. Oh, I thought it was only disadvantage on attacks against the thing you're frightened of. Nope. Oh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so maybe be careful with that. I get the feeling yep. that you're probably going to be wanting to make the extra attack whenever you can. That's great. I love that. Yeah. Um, though, it but I mean, if you do have, you know, some enemies over here within ten feet of each other, maybe yeah. you want to go for it. Yeah, maybe. So, you know, it just be thinking about option. how you use it, yeah. and it it will give you, on average. I'll just say that you'll save it for every time you can make an extra attack. That's, on average, three to four extra attacks per day. Sure. That, yeah. that is an increase in damage. I do like that. Um, and their last capstone feature, Shadowy Dodge, which was just a rename of the Rogue's Uncanny Dodge, mm -hmm. uh, is now better than that. You may now... It used to be... It was actually worse than the Rogue's Uncanny Dodge because you couldn't use it if the enemy had advantage to hit you which was stupid. They removed that. Now you can. Um, additionally, you can also teleport up to 30 feet after using this. And it also, no, this has no limit on the amount of times you can use it. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, so technically you could have somebody poke you for one damage and teleport 30 feet outside of combat. Uh, so that's kind of neat and abusable. But sure. This is definitely a lot better of a capstone than it was previously. So, overall, I do think the Gloomstalker is worse. I don't think it's significantly worse, and it may not be significantly worse, especially considering the context of the system that it is now in. Is it the best Ranger subclass? I don't know. I think the Beastmaster honestly might have a run at it, especially with the whole pet thing. Uh, yeah. And the fact that, you know, your bonus action... So, previously... The Beastmaster was sacrificing on damage because the bonus actions, attacks you can make with Sharpshooter, outdamaged anything the Beast could do. Now we don't have Sharpshooter. So the Beast's attacks now actually are a lot closer to what you could normally do with your bonus action in terms of your damage right. output. So you're not sacrificing on damage by playing a Beastmaster to gain the pet. So I think the Beastmaster might actually be better than this now. It's close, though. So you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, but it's still strong. It's just not as explosively strong. Right. Uh, last subclass for us today is the Hunter. You'll remember this as the one that had a myriad of options for you to choose every time you leveled up. Uh, yeah, I liked Hunter. 
it's it's a fine basic subclass uh its number of choices have been reduced slightly but the choices they removed you were never selecting anyway <laughs> so don't worry uh hunter, it does get a new feature though hunter's lore at level three you automatically know the vulnerabilities resistances and immunities of the target of your hunter's mark spell okay well there's a use for hunter's mark it there is yes and if you're fighting an unfamiliar creature I could genuinely see a use case if you suspect it may have some weird immunities and resistances that I, I would actually consider using Hunter Smart for that. And you could start keeping a Hunter's Journal. Yeah, which would be cool. That's a neat character concept. A cataloger of prey. Uh, so for Hunter's Prey, the giant killer feature, which nobody ever took because it was awful, uh, has been removed. And now, instead with the other two features... Uh, you can swap between them on each short or long rest. Okay. So you're no longer locked into your option, which is cool. I like, I like that. that. Yeah. Uh, defensive tactics, which is our seventh level feature. Uh, Steel will has been removed. That's the feature that gave you advantage against uh, effects that would cause you to be frightened. That's gone because <laughs> nobody took it. Uh -huh. Uh and you can swap between Escape the Horde and Multi-Attack Defense each short rest. Uh, Multi-Attack Defense has seen a slight change. It previously gave a plus four to your AC uh, after what well, the way it works is if a creature had multi-attack and it hit you once, you now had a plus four AC to its next attack okay. and subsequent ones. This has now changed and now just imposes disadvantage. It's much more simple. And like, works with even on the initial attack. No, no. All the right. way it works is they hit you once, and now all their subsequent attacks against you have disadvantage. Okay. Um. So that's it's it's going to equate to about the same thing because advantage equates to about plus four point five or so, or disadvantage mm -hmm. equates to minus. So it's not that big of a difference. Um. Superior Hunter's prey. Superior hunt. Superior Hunter's Prey. When you deal damage to a creature marked by your Hunter's Mark spell, you may also deal the 1d6 damage of Hunter's Mark to another creature within 30 feet of your original target. All right. That's, uh, all right, well. That's 3.5 that... damage to whoa, a different whoa, whoa, target. Whoa, 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 whoa. Does that bump up to d10 at level 20? It sure does, Bob. Well, there you go. We've cracked the code. Ranger's broken. <laughs> you did it. Good job. Uh, so obviously that feature is that that capstone. Uh, sorry, that's not their capstone. That's their second to last feature. It is entirely worthless uh, because three point five damage to a s secondary target is essentially nothing at fifteenth level. Like I don't know what you want me to tell you. That's you're doing nothing. Uh, uh, he might knock out a minion or two. How, what minions are you fighting at 15th level that have three less than four health? The Even guy skeletons the ones that survived have the fireball. Like 16. <laughs> anyway, their capstone, Superior Hunter's Defense. When you take damage, you may use your reaction to gain resistance to that damage type for the rest of that turn. So not until so not for the whole round. But if a guy hits you with a sword, you have resistance against slashing damage for the rest of his turn. Um, so that's all right. Yeah, when the dragon breathes fire on you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it'll essentially be you casting absorb elements on yourself, which is great. We like that spell, right? Well, no, but you you take the initial fire damage. No, I'm sorry. It does it does apply to the triggering damage. Oh, it does. Yes, I'm sorry. Did I make that clear? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it, it does. Oh, no, that's that's great then. All right. Yeah. So, so just, it, it is a good so you just straight up. Wait a second. That means you just straight up have resistance to every damage? Okay, so not exactly, right? So let's think about it this way. Say you're fighting the red dragon. It yeah. breathes fire on you. Right. Then it also makes two claw attacks. Okay. So the fire damage you have resistance against. The yeah. claws deal slashing and fire right. damage. So... You'll resist the fire, but you won't resist the slashing. Okay, and then that if won't... somebody else stabs you, 
Yeah, exactly. So if you're fighting one guy with a sword and one guy with a mace, the guy with the sword comes up and hits you, you trigger it, you have resistance to slashing damage. Right. Well, the guy with the mace comes up and hits you, you don't have resistance to bludgeoning damage. Okay. You only have one reaction. So a lot of the time it's going to be resistance to all damage. Not all the time. Yeah. That's pretty good. It is. Anyway, that's a decent capstone. I like that. So the hunter actually hasn't seen that many changes. Mostly it's a lot more flexible because the ability to swap between your features is obviously very nice. Uh, keeps you from being trapped in a feature that you don't like. Um, and the removal of the weakest options is a net positive in that it removes traps from newer <laughs> players. You know, uh, the lack of any real buffs, especially to their lower level features, still leaves this as a weaker option. Um, but the the eleventh level feature gaining a paltry, giving a paltry three point five splash damage to your hunter's mark is abysmal. Uh, that being said, this is definitely the weakest subclass in this new player's handbook. It's still not. <laughs> I was the gonna one. say it's my favorite. I'm it's the one I'd be more Bob. interested in playing. Audience, if you haven't noticed, Bob really likes playing the weakest option of everything in the that. game. I just, I, it is the quintessential uh, ranger in my mind. It does fulfill that fantasy, yes. In my mind, the quintessential ranger has a pet, but that varies from person to person. Now, uh, what do you think about the four options they chose to revise? I mean, like, uh, specifically Feywander, which had almost zero revision. Like, would you prefer to see any anything else revised? I mean, I know you can That's still play point. the old versions of, you know, the, the other subclasses that exist. But, uh... Yeah. So let's talk that? about that. Why have they brought a lot of these subclasses from Tasha's into this new book without actually changing them very much? Because uh, we noted that with the Way of Mercy Monk, uh, and we noted that, I believe it was one other that we did, uh, the Soul Knife uh, Rogue. Right. So why have they done this? Their design, their stated design role was they wanted these to be part of the core identity of the game because they felt they fulfilled some specific niche that wasn't being fulfilled otherwise. It's more of a flavor thing than it is a mechanical thing, like they wanted to revise these. I think for some reason the designers see being in the PHB as a certain level of prestige for yeah, options. Yeah, I can see that. If that's the case, I would have preferred to see uh, Swarm Keeper rather than Fae Wanderer. Oh, me personally too. That's my personal yeah. favorite. Like, I would have loved to see that, but I mean, maybe it's good that they didn't touch it. Or Drake Warden, even. It's Yeah, that also would have been a really good one. That being said, I don't really feel like either of those subclasses need revision, either. No, but I'm saying, actually, the Drake Warden thing with the, the turn order that you command the your dragon, I, I'm yeah, still Yeah, that could use that. a little bit of cleaning up. You're right. Um, I'll, I'll give you that. But I'm just, no, I'm just talking about straight up for the the flavor prestige of being in the player's handbook like i don't know those are more like other ranger archetypes that i more closely care about than uh like fey wanderer yeah i can agree with you there and they just have a different opinion than we do yeah. on that sort of thing now that being said strictly in terms of the design of the book and its value to you as a consumer I really wish they wouldn't have included any of these Tasha's subclasses. These feel like lazy fill-ins because they said they were going to make four subclasses for every class and they ran out of time on some of them. Like, well, we don't have time to revise a, a fourth ranger. Let's just throw in the Bay Wanderer. Oh, there's this weird thing. We'll fix that. Okay, done. That's yeah. what it feels like to me. This feels like lazy reprinting. And I hate to say that, but they did so much good in this book. Just take it a step further. Just finish yeah. the job that you set out to do. Anyway. Yeah, Sam and I have a video about uh, his his views on some of the 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 faults of uh, D and uh, recent D and D book releases, and uh, a lot of it comes down to laziness and filler. Yeah, it's it does feel like filler. 
I agree. And in a book that has so much not filler, like why do we have these? It doesn't need them. You could have revised the Horizon Walker or the Monster Hunter, both of which are terrible subclasses <laughs> that need some help. Like I'm not I'm never rating them. I want to see them do good. The fantasy of a teleporting around, you know, like plain wandering ranger, a, a guy who's not just a ranger of the forest, but a ranger of all planes. Yeah. That's super cool. A guy who's, you know, a literally a monster hunter. Look at the video game series. That. That's cool. I want those fantasies to well, be Well, maybe realized. the reason maybe the reason they didn't include those is because they're going to revise them in later books. I hope. But I also want yeah. to see new stuff in new books. You yeah, know? Well, I'm sure there will be. Uh, I'd like to see a mix of both. I don't know what they'll do. Mm. But I would hope my theory is that the drought of player options that we have had in the last couple of years where we are seeing a drip feed of one subclass here and then a half year later, one subclass here that they've been saving up for this new edition. And that now we're going to see another book like Tasha's or a book like Xanathar's. Um, obviously, that Fingers won't be for crossed. a few years. Yeah, obviously, if that does come, it won't be for a few years and that's fine. Yeah. You know, but either way, point being, the new Ranger is good. I have complaints with it. The design specifically is very disappointing to me. Strictly on a power sense, strictly on a gameplay feel sense, you'll have a great time with it. It's not weak. It's not underpowered. It's still probably the best half caster in the game. I just, it it could just be so much more. And that's what disappoints me. It's It's not the fact that we missed a certain bar, it's that we missed potential. He's not mad, he's just disappointed. Exactly. Okay. Sorry, that's my dad's side coming out. <laughs> um. Alright, well I guess that's that, huh? Anything else yeah. you want to say? First one we've really been negative on, sadly. You know, uh, I will say, I don't think I'm going to be that negative on any more of these. So, well. don't let this be a bad reflection on the whole book. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to future videos. Um, but yes, that was our that was the new 2024 Ranger. Uh, stay tuned for more, and uh, thank you, Cameron, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Let us know your opinions down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.